newborn babies that I look after can't talk to me. They can't tell me how they feel. They can't tell me uh, um, that they've got pain. They can't tell me where it is. There are so many babies that are born premature or that they have something that just needs to be fixed or corrected after they're born and then they have enormous potential to go on and live their lives. The Artemis Project is uh, essentially a big data analytical project. It's a project where large quantities of data are being collected not only from bedside medical devices, but also the electronic uh, medical record. The data has always existed but never been captured. What we're trying to do with the Artemis Project is something really that hasn't been done before, and that is to use big data techniques or to use mechanisms with computing to analyse large volumes of data in a way that we can try and help create new support tools for physicians, clinicians, nursing staff to use in intensive care, and particularly in neonatal intensive care. When you think about the fact that a premature baby's heart beats more than 7,000 times in an hour, they breathe more than 2,000 times, and we measure their blood oxygen 3,600 times, and you write one number for each on a chart, you can see that there's three orders of magnitude of data loss. Now, I have an analytics background and a background of going and doing things with large volumes of data. And I was looking at the paper and the one number and the medical devices, and my first question was, I see that that's what you're writing on the paper, but what are you doing with all the data that's in the medical devices? There's so much more there that we can use and do so much more complex analysis if we can just connect to that. We've known for um, some time that there can be subtle changes in physiological uh, measurements before patients become sick and for instance uh, there's now 10 years of good research uh, data that shows there are subtle and not so subtle changes in heart rate characteristics up to 24 hours before a neonatal uh, patient becomes unwell with late onset infection before the baby shows any clinical signs of being unwell. As you know, we, we take a, a great interest in, in the monitors. Uh... In Lucy's case, she's had surgery. There's potential that um, there could be some infection that can come out of that scenario. Um, so we can be creating systems that we can let you know 24 hours before that we're starting to see signs in the heart rate. Um, then we have the ability to start to give you information about what's happening in isolation, what's happening together, how long are these events occurring, are they increasing. These have the potential to tell us that there's something that's about to happen or that the baby's condition is deteriorating. That's interesting. Yeah. Even as I'm watching the heart rate changing um, at the moment, you know, there's 20 points difference in, in the heart rate and, and is there potential that these things can be telling us something um, about an event that's about to happen if we start watching these things on a, on a regular basis. We know that there are patterns that can be recognised and that those patterns can be regarded as the signature of a clinical condition. So the whole uh, goal of this project is to first confirm these observations Second, um, make sure that we can capture them. Third, to interpret the uh, features that we're seeing. And finally, to provide uh, some kind of uh, meaningful message to the clinicians looking after these babies to offer the um, possibility of earlier intervention. With the research we're doing now, we collect 90 million data points per baby per day. 
between all the different signals that we're capturing. I mean, that's just an enormous amount of data. Now, we've got the real potential to use that now for clinical improvement in their outcomes. For me, that's just it's really exciting prospects. This is my concept of um, advanced clinical decision support. And I say advanced because there's a component of intelligence built into it. And it's also real-time clinical decision support. Uh, and this is an approach that will provide clinicians with much more information, much more meaningful information, and it will provide it in real time at the point of care. It should lead to um, better decision making, which should lead to better interventions, which should lead to better outcomes. So it's really um, quite an exciting idea.